It didn't listen to me. It walked out of the thicket. It turned around and looked at me. They looked up, and in this tree, there was a monkey man. And the monkey man jumped down out of the tree and started running away. And suddenly, they're right in front of the car. He slams on the brakes and manages to stop. And he's skidding because it's not quite, you know, um, gravelling. And for literally for about a second and a half, they just stood there because they don't know where to go. And you tell them panicking, they're like roof dropping. Their 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 face is like twitching. Bigfoot Society. This is your host, Jeremiah Byron. Every week I talk to different people in the cryptozoology field. You never know who's going to be on next week. If you'd like to sponsor the show, head on over to patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society. You get access to a ton of things there, including a close-knit cryptid community on Discord where you can connect with like-minded cryptid researchers and enthusiasts, weekly bonus content, the ability to hang out with each week's guest after the main show, exclusive merch, and much, much more. In this episode of Bigfoot Society, you get to talk to Nate Henry from the podcast Blurry Creatures. This episode is going to rock your socks and blow you away because, wow, do we talk about some some far-out stuff. And I'm going to let you know up front, we're going to be talking about how cryptids relate to you know, the Bible, and it's going to get, there's going to be crazy stuff in there you never heard before. I mean, this is going to be an episode that's just going to make you question some things. Uh, it's going to be interesting. So I say, you know, even if that's not your thing, give it a chance. Uh, if anything, it'll be a a good time to kind of sit back, relax, have something to, to drink or something to eat, just kind of chill out. But again, thanks for listening to another episode of Bigfoot Society. Uh, this episode, Nate Henry from the uh, show Blurry Creatures. Thanks for listening. All right, Bigfoot Society, welcome back for another episode. I've got the pleasure of talking to uh, Mr. Nate Henry from the Blurry Creatures podcast. How's it going, Nate? Hey, buddy. What's going on? It's going good. Life Dude. is good. <laughs> Oh man, it's so good to have you on here. I've been wanting to chat with you for a while. I know. Um, dude, this is I'm gonna be uh I'm gonna be giddy gust tonight. It's gonna be great. So no, no, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. So let's go ahead and um let's let's go through your bio. I, I snagged your bio from your website, uh right, blurrycreatures.com. Cool. Um to put in a plug for you there too. So Thanks. Nate Henry grew up in Northern California and is the lead singer of the rock band Sherwood, rock and roll. The band, the band played in 15 countries and sold 100K plus records. Nate's previous podcast was also a top 15 variety show when he began to learn more about Bigfoot in the sightings. Awesome. Uh, he contacted Luke Rogers in the summer of 2020 to focus their efforts on a new show called Blurry Creatures, exploring the phenomena, and together they launched in August that year, August mm. 2020. Dude, and the rest is history for mm. sure. We're having fun. We're having fun for sure. Dude, what mm, what a crazy trip it, it's probably been. You know, I've been like aware of you guys ever since I saw uh one of your back to the future memes on Instagram and I was like, I don't care what this is. I'm in 100% because they were the the best back to the future cryptid mashup memes I've ever seen and I was I was hooked. And then uh come to find out you've got an amazing podcast. Uh, I'm going to talk about it for a few, just a few minutes so my okay. listeners know uh, a little bit about it. But I will say, listeners, if you haven't heard of Blurry Creatures, you need to go check it out. Uh, their interview with Jeff Mel Dr. Jeff Meldrum is probably one of the best I've ever heard because you bring in his son. And mm. there's some info in that interview. It's it, it's it's amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah. I am uh, about 11 or episode 11 or 12. So I'm hitting the. Dr. Burt, Dr. Judd Burton and mm. that stuff in my mind is just like, All right, just, dude, it's so good. And I, I know there's about two years I got to catch up with. So, oh, no, it's fine. I mean, there's dude, so many, so you, good. You, you got 
it's it's hard enough for getting your own podcast done and nope. getting that out there. That's the thing, dude, because I'm like, I got to focus on this. But yeah. then I'm like, I got to like take a walk around the neighborhood. Listen right? to Blurry Creatures. That's so. what you got to do. But enough about me uh, talking about Blurry Creatures. What? How do you explain the podcast to people that may not have heard about it yet, Nate? What yeah. is Blurry Creatures? Well, I think... I think blurry creatures started out just like we just kind of were in the Bigfoot space, like a lot of cryptid shows. But over the years, when I was listening to sort of the Bigfoot encounters, I was just hmm. found myself consistently frustrated with it just staying weird and it just kind of stayed in this weird space. Nobody really wanted to take, I don't know, sort of a bold approach to, okay, like, how can we make sense of this thing, um, this phenomena, the cryptid phenomena in sort of all these other areas that I had some previous, you know, knowledge of specifically growing up in church and sure. yeah, being part of like multiple Christian communities and going, OK, well, if Bigfoot's real, it's got to make sense in this paradigm of of the Bible, because I believe I believe in that story, too. So how does this all make sense together? And I think a lot of people are afraid to explore because a lot of people are pro Bigfoot, but if you get into anything else, they shut off. Then and it's like, yeah. see you later. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I get it. I get it. There's a lot of different types of people in this space. And, um, but I think when it comes to podcasts, you got to find your niche. And that's sort of just, we didn't really choose it. It shows us. I feel like we just started going down those roads. Yeah. And it was like, okay, well, the show is definitely, definitely becoming something else either we don't air this or we air these and we just don't care. Yeah. <laughs> because, but I, I think that's kind of set us apart in a, a given us a little niche of our own. So, and it's become something so much crazier than I, I had no idea that it would become sort of what it's become. And, uh, kind of a mashup of, uh, paranormal meets like, sometimes theology heavy theology it's and, intense yeah 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 and i so i hope it scratches the itch for people who who want to get out of the it's just weird all the time and maybe try to get some more like hey here's some ancient history here's some theology here's some here's a world view that you might not have considered um here's some maybe just to all this weird stuff you know so mm. That's crazy. So that's that. So it's heavy. It can be it, it, heavy. It's so it's so heavy. It's like <laughs> it's like this is heavy doc heavy to yeah. quote back to the future. Dude. Look at you. I can't imagine like can you I can't imagine being in like, you know, growing up in the church right now or being in high school and knowing like words like Nephilim or yeah. giants and then searching for it in podcasts and stumbling upon blurry creatures. It would just change. I mean, it's gotta be. I think it's changing people's lives out there. I, I've seen things where it's like, you know, oh, uh, I haven't read the Bible in years. And this podcast is like making me get into like Genesis mm -hmm. and read the accounts for myself, which is, I mean, you know, no matter what you believe in, that's that's pretty incredible that a podcast is making you get into a book and read it again, like mm -hmm. isn't influencing you that much. Uh, what's the what's the craziest thing that you've learned so far in this whole like is uh, journey mm. that there's some crazy things. But is there one that stands out where it's like that just blew my mind? It was nuts. Yeah, I, I would say that, you know, I grew up with a lot of these stories and these historical accounts and things, and I didn't have trouble believing them. Just like when I listen to stories of Bigfoot, I didn't have trouble believing a lot of them. Um, I just didn't think that many people were lying about their experiences. And mm. I think that some people are uber skeptical and I'm not, I'm not naturally, I mean, I'm skeptical in the sense that like I need um, a scientific answer, but I'm not, I, I, you know, I can listen to 500 encounters and they're all roughly sa saying a similar thing. I can go, sure. okay, this phenomenon is real. I don't need a dead body for me to believe okay. that Bigfoot is out there harassing people or messing with their campsites or terrifying them in some encounter or even just a benevolent, you know, encounter or whatever it is. There's, there's so many different experiences, but generally there's a lot of people who, you know what it's like. You tell a friend, what do you do for a living or what do you want to do for a living? 
and then you, you the topic of Bigfoot comes up and some people have like, oh, my cousin saw one or yep. or yep. like, really? What? Mm -hmm. What do you talk about? It's it's one of the two. You know, it's it's not usually there's not usually this like open minded, like, oh, really? That's interesting. Tell me more. You know? Yeah. It's, it's more like, oh, you're crazy. I'm yeah. writing you off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Dude. Yeah. So I would say that, you know, growing up with a lot of these stories, biblical stories, having some knowledge of them. I think the one thing that changed my whole understanding of the Old Testament, Genesis, and all these stories. I mean, everyone knows the story of, of Noah and the boat and the, right. the animals. I mean, this is right. pretty universal story, whether you believe it happened or not. That's another whole other podcast. But yep. um, most people have seen some sort of ancient picture of like the boat, the animals, even like a cartoon, whatever it is you've seen, you have knowledge of the subject. But I think the one thing that really blew my mind is that God had to flood the world because humans almost went extinct. And that's the part where my mind was be like, whoa, yeah. like, yeah, we almost went extinct as a species. So yep. that opens up the door for cryptids because that's what everyone says on our show where the cryptids came from. They came from this crazy pre-flood world where the, everything was messed up. And that's why we see all these chimerical creatures to this day, everything from goat man to, to, dog man to bigfoot it it could have stemmed from this point in history and then somehow some of these things survived uh or they were messing with it again later on and in, in in the story so that was the thing so that really wild. blew my mind like it's so whoa wild. it's not like oh yeah everyone was just bad and god just wiped everyone out it was like no human beings were on the verge of extinction we needed to he needed to do something to save us save the species so right now, a lot of my, uh, so I'm going to say, guys, <laughs> give this episode a chance. Yeah. If you're this far already, yeah, give it a chance because yeah. it is very interesting. And if you're yeah. this far into Bigfoot Society, 139 episodes, sure. we've, we've been down some crazy roads together. We yeah. can go down this road together. Yeah. This could change your life. So let's go down this road together, guys. Now, yeah. it's very interesting. Um, we talk about how, uh, so that viewed the cryptids were coming from before the flood. Um, so it, let's unpack that a little bit because this mm -hmm. is a cryptozoology podcast. So I talked to, you know, people in the cryptozoology niche, but so with this view, um, are we saying that the cryptids have always been there or they came into, they were made by someone else or, or can you unpack that a little bit more, Nate? Well, there's multiple theories that we've heard. I mean, obviously a lot of this stuff is speculation, Sure. But a lot of people on our show, because we get we get into this specifically because I think I what I wanted with Blurry Creatures was I wanted answers. I wanted yeah. like I wanted to know where does this stuff come from? OK, after uh, after episode 500 of the, of whatever Bigfoot encounter I heard, I'm right. like, <laughs> dude, I'm going crazy. Like, I want to <laughs> know what is this thing? Where did it come from? But then, like, you know. Um, I have my own experience of seeing cryptid as a kid, and we can talk about that uh, oh, later. Yeah, I want later to. on, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but it was it was at that point in my life where I, where people were describing the cryptid I saw, and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought I I thought I just imagined that whole experience. I didn't think I actually had an experience. So, um, what was the question again? I'm totally off. Like, so yeah, uh, and and the the thing about blurry creatures, there's so many rabbit trails. Yeah. Each episode goes crazy, so I, I get you how that can happen. You talking about the pre-flood world. I, so I wanted to hone in on, um, you saying these cryptids were around before the flood. Yeah. Were they made yeah. by something, or had has okay. Mark Man always been there, or yeah. like that kind of thing? Yeah. yeah. Well, I saw. Okay, so there's multiple theories that these yeah, yeah, things yeah. can come out of portals. They can make they oh. can open up portals, and these things can come out of them. We interviewed a guy, Roger, who has a serpent mound on his farm. Whoa. And he dug up giant skeletons on his farm and, and he had basically he lived in sort of the Great Lakes area okay. and, you know, where, you know, the, there's tons of ancient history. He's he's got this serpent mound on his property and he said that uh, he had all kinds of cryptid activity on his farm. Really? Um, and he said he, he believed it was a portal. There was some sort of portal there on his because it was this ancient I don't know if you've ever heard, seen the Serpent Mound in Ohio, but these Serpent Mounds. Seen pictures, yeah. Yeah, that thing, mm -hmm. that earthworks is pretty huge. And it is. It's, you know, most people on our show say it's not Native American. This thing predate the Native American. Wow. They come from 
the, the the giants basically built that that uh that structure as long as it, and there's like 700 mounds in america that they built too so basically if you go all the way back the story is and really quick like a five minute more like 50 second breakdown is that human beings got the technology mm-hmm. in exchange for women genesis genesis yep. six yep. so basically human women look good angels who are not much different than us right got jealous cruised down in their went through a portal or they drove their ufo or whatever they did <laughs> they came down they landed on mount herman and they exchanged said okay we'll give you our women but you got to give us something in return Uh-oh. and that's how they gave them all the knowledge how to build the pyramids and all this other stuff so oh wow. it was this exchange of technology okay. versus for women and then the 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 that's the story way the bible doesn't describe it like that but right but people who've come on our show have basically described it like that that this was this 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 exchange and so basically these angels uh paid the price so their offspring when they were hooked up with women okay their offspring were these giants and these gotcha. giants got a lot of them say they got pretty big and they went all over the world they were building pyramids all over the world they had sacred geometry they mm. knew how to build things and they went all over the world because you can find their their remains all over the world and so we we unpack a lot of that on our show we've probably spent the first 50 60 70 episodes laying out laying out the giants <laughs> yeah and how the giants were a part of the corrupted creation now now bigfoot dog man all these cryptids could have been part of the corrupted creation because it says that the all flesh was corrupted so it's possible that some sort of angelic dna mixes with some sort of primate and then you have this superhuman slash wow uh, bigfoot type creature wow Be- because all the, the all the woo that goes with bigfoot right you do the show long enough you hear all the weird stuff yeah yeah and that's the, the great thing about bigfoot society is that so what i try to do is have a platform for all different types of uh yeah. thinking to do with cryptozoology and mm-hmm. you know yeah exactly i i've heard all different types of viewpoints so, is very interesting this is very some people think oh, that's crazy but this is basically greek mythology right? totally yep. Sadar, satyrs you know um centaurs um narnia stuff dude yeah all the all the creatures that where do they where do they get that from why do they write about this i mean and even this the you know other creatures like the cyclops which you know they they say was an actual Man. like yeah. race of giants that built you know the ladies didn't like the cyclops so they were building stuff you know they were they were too ugly to to hook up with the ladies so they just <laughs> they just went off and built like <laughs> but they call the masonry on these some of these uh, ancient megaliths cyclopean so oh, wow. where does that come from you know and i think a lot of people they they write off mythology as untrue or stories but i actually just think it's 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 the way that they preserve their history mm. if that makes sense okay but, but because we're all so far removed, but anyone who listens to your show is is open minded to the fact that this there's cryptid creatures out there. So if oh, you yeah. think about it from that sense, the Greeks wrote about it different than we would write about it today. But I think that it stems from encounters. It stems from truths. I don't think they were making that stuff up. I think they had wow. experiences with all those creatures. And um, dude, you, I mean, you still hear from people who see the weirdest stuff today. It's yeah totally man and you're like how is that possible how do these creatures still exist you know but do they you probably... get, uh... oh go ahead Sorry. well i mean we heard some guy tell us a story about his grandpa seeing a centaur on their farm with like his 12 brothers so oh my goodness and that I was, was just... like 19 1910 somewhere in there whoa man oh he said that, it came yeah. run... he said it came running up the driveway whoa. and this is back before they had indoor you know electricity air conditioning okay. so they would sit outside at night when it was like, especially here in the South, you know, you sit outside at night and it doesn't get, it doesn't cool off until late. And they sure. were all out on their porch. And, and sure enough, this, this half horse, half human creature rolls up on the farm, <laughs> looks at all of them and then just takes off. Yeah, oh, I know. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, I wish his grandpa incredible. was still around. We would have had yeah. him on the show, but uh, you hear those stories Dude. and it makes you scratch your head. Like, wow. How does a creature like that? still exists but this is like greek mythology these creatures existed and walked the earth now the greeks have their own 
Zeus is their God, right? And so they filter mm -hmm. it all through that yep, paradigm yep. versus our show. We filter it all through the Christian paradigm. And we say that, you know, those gods were real. They weren't the God. Mm. They were created beings just like we are created beings. But um, so that's sort of the rivalry is that everyone believed that their God was the supreme being. And then they had all this loyalty to that. But but the creatures stemmed from this, this what they call sort of meeting of the realms. The the angelic realm meets the human realm. They okay. mix and their their DNAs are not supposed to go together. And their DNAs create all sorts of crazy, you know, abominations, basically. Wow. Things that shouldn't have been here that were here. And it sounds like fan fantasy, but if you got but if you think about it, every single ancient culture talks about giants mm -hmm. every single ancient culture talks about chimerical creatures yep and a great flood so yep. i mean are you going to go up against all that if you want to that takes some faith to i think to dismiss all those things now you know but that but then it calls into question a lot of theological convictions and that's why people turn it off they're just like i can't do it I they're can't. like yeah i don't want to talk about it they're like get out of here no i yeah i, I totally get it oh man so. It, it's so well that was a really good summary and like your listeners if that sounds really interesting to you after this subscribe to blurry creatures <laughs> and just start listening from the first episode you'll hit some some solid bigfoot interviews and then eventually it, it's gonna really get's get crazy clear. 11 12 that's that's when for me it was like oh man let's go <laughs> <laughs> well that's that's when we made the decision to kind of like let blurry become what it was i was gonna ask okay so that's the time when you were like let's stop thinking about what people think and let's just ride this train to the end yeah yeah okay. like i i think i just think you have to carve out your own yeah go to your own path and do your own thing and blurry creatures wasn't it, I wasn't designed to be a Bigfoot podcast, although Bigfoot is is sort of well, we we keep coming back to it every time we get a little bored or every time we're okay. we're you know we keep it in the creature space, but you know angelic beings would be considered blurry creatures. I think you know if, if someone has an encounter with an angel or a demon, it would it would be a blurry creature in our opinion, or an alien or anything weird that's just not human i think okay. that that falls in that category but i think the category expanded over time as more people came on the show we were kind of learning as we were going like a lot yeah. of stuff that i didn't know about a lot of this stuff before oh, wow. we started the show and then we started bringing on guys and we're like okay this is getting weird did those guys find you or did you find those guys how did that work i'm curious like did you just know dr judd burton or like did he just get hey, he guys, did an I'm interview here. he did an interview on giants <laughs> on another podcast okay and I liked what he had to say. Yeah. And honestly, to be honest with you, a lot of the, there's, there's just those people who knew a lot about the Nephilim specifically were very, very receptive and open to coming on our show early on. Okay. Interesting. Brian Forrester's and all yep. that stuff. Yep. But the guys, you know, in the Bigfoot space were harder to get a hold of and harder to get on the show. <laughs> And it was just like, okay, another podcast about Bigfoot. No, I don't want to do. I don't want to do it. I don't want to go on. But yeah. the the Nephilim guys were all really receptive and open. So it, interesting. It, it felt like the show sort of was supposed to go there, and I was like, we don't have time to fight it, and I don't want to. But one guy would come on the show, and he would drop a name. He would this be like, is, "This is smart," and I'd be like, "Okay, if he knows that guy, like." Fritz Zimmerman came on, was talking about how he went to all the mounds in North America and wrote a book about it, spent 15 years writing this book about the mounds in North America. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about some stuff with L.A. Marzulli. And I was like, L.A. Marzulli, OK, we'll try to get him on the show. And, you know, that was sort of how we rolled with it. OK. Um, but then people would say, hey, you're going to bring this guy on the show. And he would come on and he would mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. well, I'm friends with this guy. You guys do a pretty good job. I'll email him for you. Maybe he'll come on your show. And then it was just Brilliant. one thing after yep. another. And then we, we just networked that way. But oh, we're trying smart. to tell a linear, like I tell people, you got to go from the beginning and just roll with it. If you just hop in, you're going to be like, what is this? You know, you got to start from the beginning. Cause yeah. 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 I mean, we, oh we kinda, my goodness. yeah. I mean, you do a podcast like this and you just learn so much. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Regardless of, 
you know, what your thoughts are. You're going to hear all kinds of stories and you're going to read so much stuff. And so that's kind of, that's kind of the, the story of blurry creatures, but I think it's cool. It, it, we kind of marry the paranormal and the weird stuff. The church doesn't want to talk yep. about. We kind of yeah. put them together. Yeah. Uh, if you, so I'm going to say, I have a few listeners that grew up in the church. I've yeah. noticed that in cryptozoology. Remember all that stuff that you used to bring up in like, when you were in junior high and you tried to mess with your pastor and then yeah. they'd be like, get out of here. Yeah. This is the stuff you're going to learn about in uh, blurry creatures <laughs> yeah. and uh, it'll blow your mind. But Nate, I want to make sure. We, uh, can we talk about your encounter? That sounds very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Before we go on. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I've said this on the show when I was about six or seven, okay. I was, I was, I lived in Northern California. I grew up in the Sacramento area awesome. and uh, you know, we weren't too far from like a uh, major river. American river ran from like Northern right through like about a mile and a half, two miles away from my parents' house. So that's just to give you some context that we were in the city. We were in the suburbs, pretty big, pretty big. I mean, Sacramento is pretty big. It's the capital of California for those who don't know. And, um, probably like six or seven years old. This is like the height of the eighties, nice. 86, 87. Oh yeah. There's a lots of, uh, you know, like, scary movies on tv and it's it's the height of just weird films and ufo stuff like et and uh it's just a it's just a weird time for i guess to be a young kid seeing a lot of these movies thinking whatever i'm about to experience is just in my mind right but i'm it's a summer night and in northern california you open your windows and doors at night and then my dad had this fan in the house that would just suck all the air in from the outside. So we would just turn off your main AC, open up your windows, open up your doors and let the air flow in. Right. So it's a normal thing. So the whole house is open, so okay. to speak. But uh, I'm the last one to bed or I'm thinking I'm the last one to bed. I don't know. Everyone. It's just that time of night where everyone's like, I'm a big fan. There's six. There's four kids. I'm the youngest. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone's just kind of doing their thing. I'm walking from the, the living room to the to the like the other part of the house and when you walk through the living room to like the kitchen in the main area there's like a little like uh outdoor patio room and there's a sliding glass door and then there was a like a, a just a regular um half kind of like the screen mesh on the top and i could see out the backyard through the so i could see through a screen door but I could see through a glass door to the screen door, but the glass door is open. So all I, the only thing between me and the backyard, it's like, like 10 feet of this, this like patio room. And then there's a screen and, and it's just this little door because the regular door is open. So basically like the whole house is open when I say that all this to give you context of I'm walking and I, for some reason I'm walking by the, and I don't, and I just have this feeling, look out the window. Something oh. is looking, something is looking at you. Okay. And I'm at the age, I have three older siblings. I don't have the ability to make up wild things. I look out the out the window, out to the backyard, like I've done a thousand times, you know, and I see this dog man werewolf face no in way. yeah, in like in the screen, like high up looking at me. And I like what? I like did a double take. And then I look, I, I did like a triple take. I'm like, am I really seeing this right now? And it, I swear it had like glowing eyes, like red eyes. And it was like, and it smirked at me. Whoa. And I screamed and I ran into my parents' room. I woke up my parents or they were like in their room reading or whatever they were doing. And, you know, I was like, I just saw a werewolf creature and I'm, I'm still young enough. I'm like seven, six or seven. That my parents are kind of like, ah, you're probably just in your imagination. And then years later, uh, when I first started emailing, um, sorry, my kid's yelling at me. You're uh, good. So the cool thing about this show is if kids make noise, I don't care because I got a kid and kids rock. So you go yeah. ahead, man. Well, I told them I was doing an interview, but they always forget. Um, I love it, dude. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> so I basically, they come out, they look in the they look and they're like, there's nothing there. And like, no, I swear I saw it. I saw it. It was there. And, 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 and the thing is, is like years later from that point on until years later, I wouldn't, I would just kind of put my head down and run from that point of the house to the other side of the house, probably for like okay. three or four years after that. 
Wow. So I had that PTSD of like, I saw something, I don't want to look out the backyard. And I remember my oh, dad used man. to have this fireplace and he'd go get, he's like, go get wood out of the backyard. And I'm like, mm-hmm. like, no, I don't want <laughs> like, I had like <laughs> 10 flashlights and I would, I wouldn't want to go get wood. I was pretty scarred for a couple of years. I don't rem- I remember not looking out the wind out the window specifically more than anything <sighs> that I wouldn't look out that until I was about 12, 13. And then I just got to that age where you're like, you write it off as like, oh, I just, I just imagine that experience. But then okay. I'm probably 35, 33, 30, 32, somewhere in there. I start listening to podcasts while I'm remodeling an old house. Okay. And then more and more people were coming on shows talking about the dog, man. I'm like, yep, yep. what? It's a thing. This is real. This is a, and then I, and then it was, I put two and two together. Like, oh my God, I saw that. I saw that creature. Wow. Mine felt more like a demonic creature. But who's to say Dogman isn't? I don't who knows. So all I'd say all bets are off, dude. Oh, I mean Dogman encounters are they're sinister. They're the they're the worst. They that thing is that thing is like terrifying. And it it definitely was it looked just like you would imagine it would look. It looked exactly like all the descriptions a, a lot of like the tv shows they get it right they, this thing looks like a werewolf it's, it's nuts it's, it's crazy the thing is you never hear about a oh this dog man was nice and we ended yeah. up high-fiving each other like i did hear one story of that I did oh hear, really yeah like some kid had like i don't know if it was a dog man per se but it was like a a, a dog like cryptid and he like he like would go to his clubhouse in the back of this forest and like ooh, okay. he, he showed another friend. I did hear one in like story or oh, I'm, I'm like, interested. That, okay. that doesn't sound like the dog man I yeah. heard, I know, but who knows, man? Could have been that's like a, a that's some other cryptid like, could have been a slow one, you know. Wolf guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I and oh, all that to say is it took me a long time to put two and two together. It took me okay. a long time. Dude. That story is so wild. Thank you for for sharing that. Yeah, that's yeah. Awesome, so, man. I was not so, expecting a dog, man. I was expecting a Bigfoot. Like, dude, no, that's awesome. This is like in the suburbs of Sacramento in my parents' wow. backyard. Like, I don't know, but um, but a lot of we interviewed Dark Waters, and he said a lot of yes. people, a yep. lot of people have dogman encounters in urban areas, and I've it's, heard that. Yeah, it's really strange. It's a strange, you know, Bigfoot, not as much. Wow. Big, Bigfoot likes it's uh, likes likes the likes the woods. Bigfoot is a wild and crazy crazy dude. Have you ever gone out looking for Bigfoot before, Nate? Is there any desire to do that? Or, I mean, I, or I mean, so much? every time I've been out, so I've always been in the Smokies okay. many many times. Oh, dude, great then. area, yeah. But uh, more like I wouldn't let my kids out of my sight when I was in uh, the Smokies. Yeah, yeah. we <laughs> like, don't want a missing four one one, you yeah, know, again. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. So I mean, I have knowledge of it, and okay. to be honest, I'm. The more I do the show, the more I don't want it. I don't really. That's the thing, right? I don't want to get out there and have an encounter. I mean, yeah, specifically down here in the South, they, 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 they all the encounters are not good. They're not pretty. Yeah. They're, no, they're I pretty chill. You. And like, yeah. you know, Washington, Oregon, it's more like I looked at it. It looked at me. It took off kind of thing. It, it wasn't. It wasn't a terrifying experience, but the stuff here, it's like, especially in like East Texas, Oklahoma, uh, um, Alabama, Bigfoot yeah. encounters get yeah. wild, dude. You yeah. don't want to mess with the Alabama like white the land of the lakes right here. <laughs> yes. East yeah. of Nashville or West of Nashville, actually. Um, stuff like that, man. I mean, I, I, I firmly believe this stuff is real, so I don't, and I think there's more to it than just. I don't take the theory that it's just gigantopithecus. That's okay. okay. I don't, I mean, I, I think I was there for a little while, but clearly when you start your own show, you can't, I don't know. You just can't deny the weird. It just Dude, keeps coming I, at I you. I totally get it. And because I know if it's happening to me, I would assume people are sending you stories as well. Yeah. Ones that they're like, don't tell anyone this. And you're like, yeah. this is the craziest thing I've ever read in my life. Yeah. And yeah. I respect people when they say, don't share this. So I won't share it. But yeah. I'm like, yeah, the weird stuff is out there, Nate, for sure, dude. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then and the Bigfoot and the UFOs and all oh, the other stuff. It's like, dude. what is happening? So that's kind of how I got into all this space. And um, I love it, dude. 
Oh my goodness. Here we are. Getting Back blurry. to to blurry another blurry creatures question. Um what's so the whole think of whole like the whole journey so far. What's the most unexpected thing to happen because of you guys uh doing the blurry creatures podcast? Has there been like anything that's been like, oh, that was weird. My life would have been not like that if I, you know, hadn't been doing this podcast or like, you know, anything comes to mind like that it's kind of a oddball question but. i mean we've had a lot of we just did uh a conference here in nashville with tim alberino oh who, cool oh yeah yeah who okay. did a bunch of interviews he's been on ancient aliens he's wow. done he's done uh, a lot of work with um chasing legends and did a lot of documentaries in peru about the giants and um a lot of that stuff so we were we kicked off his concrete com conference here in nashville and uh there was like a pretty big crowd early for the show and okay i was like all right here we go our first live podcast <laughs> uh kicking off the tim alberino's oh, event wow. and it was on transhumanism which was really heavy but uh Yikes, you know we, yeah. we we i was just laughing with luke afterwards I'm like did you expect any he's like dude i had no idea i thought i thought this was gonna be a hobby podcast i didn't think that i would be doing this yeah like on the weekends yeah. definitely wow. didn't think i was going to be like on a part of a conference or doing live stuff and then just we were, last week we were charting in like I think forty something countries. You were. I was so hyped for you guys. I was like, yes. So you that's guys are wild. doing it. That's wild. Like all people all over the world are getting blurry, and I didn't. Oh my goodness. I didn't expect any of that. So, um, wow. It's weird to be like the nature, the, like the number one nature show in some country I didn't even know existed. Like, I didn't you know, know that like, was a country. <laughs> like what? I mean, most of them I know, but every once in a while there's one on there, and I'm like, oh. Where is that? Where is that place exactly? I got to Google this. <laughs> to, to put it into perspective a, a different way for listeners. So imagine your favorite like celebrity podcast where it's like, oh, the guys from this show just hanging out and having a podcast. Blurry Creatures is up there with those other podcasts. That's what that means. Like they are that up on the the, the entire world of iTunes. Like they're in that area. And it's it's crazy to see that happen for a podcast from our you know weird niche yeah, of, it, yeah it's so much fun to watch thanks man that's cool like i appreciate you having an attitude because i i think we were fans of a lot of shows too and to be up there like last week we were up there with some of the shows that i've been listening to for years and i was like whoa like yeah how did this happen and uh, i think it's because a lot of people are experiencing more and more unexplainable things and if they did grow up with some of these Bible stories, they don't know how to, they need something to put it all together. And we do that for a lot of people. And in a lot of countries experience a lot of weird stuff. Like like countries, we, we chart really well in like South Africa. Really? All over the, you know, all those countries there. Oh, because wow. I think a lot of people experience a lot of stuff that Americans write off as, uh, yeah, you know, you're just doing drugs. And it's like, yep. no, these people like, you go over there and you interview anyone who's working with, you know, in dark places. And they'll tell you some mm -hmm. stories that, that mm -hmm. sound like they're straight out of the exorcist. And you're like, wow. what, you know, in America, it's, it's wild. We debate if this stuff's even real, but over there, they're like, yep. not only is it real, but we're, we're actively fighting against this stuff. And, uh, so those kinds of countries seem to like our show a lot. And, uh, okay. I love it. I mean, but it's weird every once in a while to hit like, uh, like Finland and Switzerland. Yeah, Some dude. of these fish are like, okay. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I had a question I almost forgot. I'm, I'm so glad I remembered. Um, uh, have you ever talked to Jordy from Time Cop 1983? Dude, I like what's it? There's gotta be a story there because you're using his his song I all the time. Him. I emailed okay. him. Yeah. So I emailed the guy and I said, Hey, do you care if we use your 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 song in our podcast? Yeah, on the and run. He's, yeah. He's like, No, that's that's cool. Nice. Just tag us in the 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 notes, you know. Okay. So, I mean, hopefully we've sold him quite a few songs over. I mean, I should have thought about it more because YouTube doesn't like copyrighted music and all that stuff. Yeah, but, that's true. Yeah, but who but, cares? Yeah, it's a great song. We just have fun because we have more of an '80s. We try to make it fun and nostalgic. Luke grew. We both grew up in the '80s. We we needed yep. something to market the show with. Yep. And I was like, oh, so wow. good. We don't really take ourselves too seriously. We take the content super serious, but we don't take ourselves super serious. So it was like this great. And I needed like old artwork to hash 
mash it up, make memes, have fun. So work on my Yoda voice a little bit here and there. Dude, <clears throat> it's crazy. Like you're doing, so you're making all the video, like yeah, meme yeah. mashup things. Are yeah. you making the artwork too every yeah. week? Yeah. That just makes me furious because you're so good, Nate. Like, oh, and thanks, it's dude. like hats off to you. And I mean that facetiously, like, like hats <laughs> off to you seriously though, because like you're very talented and I, I love the, the Star Wars, like, you yeah. voice over Yoda and oh my goodness, it's so funny. Like I, I'm yeah. laughing so hard. Like, well, I have fun. Oh my goodness. It's, 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 I did that with my band a lot. So I learned how to make con the digital sure content would. with, with the, yeah, with the yeah, band. Yeah, yeah. So years okay. and years of trying to come up with fun, clever ways to get people to like our band, listen to our band without saying yep. like our band, listen right. to our band more like we would come up with a lot of funny stuff. And this is in the heydays of MySpace. So MySpace was That's always true, man. We signed with MySpace <laughs> records. So, so, so Tom from MySpace signed our band Whoa. and they were always wanting more digital content. Okay. So I learned really early on, this is 2006. Like, Oh, like this is like before YouTube was really YouTube. This was, this is like MySpace was kind of trying to, be youtube at that yeah, point yeah, yeah so we were making all kinds of stupid videos and putting them on myspace and they were going viral before wow th that was a thing okay. so i okay. learned how to like make content but i didn't really have but you know for for a long time i just didn't have something i just felt like was worth promoting and then i started hearing all this stuff and i'm like well this is fun how do i how do i get people to listen to my podcast well maybe if i make yoda and luke having a conversation about nephilim that would so be good that would be <laughs> funny yeah. and stupid enough but also like Hey, I want to check this podcast out because that oh yeah that just made me laugh. So that's what I that's what we do. And and I learned I have I have Sherwood to thank for learning on how to do Photoshop and Adobe Premiere and all those Dude. the Adobe stuff. So yeah, thanks for uh me. yeah, yeah. Clarification for some listeners that are asking, that was the 2005 era, correct? That around yeah. that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Dude, Sherwood. Good Old stuff. School. I used to jam Old out. School. I used to jam out the Sherwood back then. That day. is we, dude, we've had a couple crossovers and that's always wild to me that like, <laughs> we're like, yeah. like last week I had several people reach out to me Yeah, from college. Some people were like, dude, I just started listening to this podcast. Didn't realize it was you. We were in Whoa. class together and I'm like, wow, really? So it's really hit. That's it, wild. Yeah. That is weird. When people you knew from 10 years ago or oh 20 years goodness. ago, randomly find your podcast. I'm like, all right. Don't judge me too harsh, okay? Just yeah, listen, it'll change your <laughs> life. Um, but yeah, I like to have a section of the of the episode uh, where it's we try to get some salt, maybe some solid advice. So yeah, let's pretend we're talking to uh, someone who's like I've you know I want to get into podcasting as aspiring podcaster. Okay, uh, do you have any advice for those people that are like I want to get into this? Yeah, uh, maybe some advice to to people like that. Yeah. I mean, I always tell people who tell us like, Hey, you should do a podcast about this and this and this mm -hmm. like podcasting is more like, what have you already been talking about before uh -huh. you've had a podcast? So yes. if you've been talking about something for a solid five, five, 10 years already, yeah. Yeah. that's what you want to podcast about. Exactly. Because you already know a lot about the subject. You're already passionate about the subject. You'd be talking about it anyways. Don't start a podcast about something you're not interested in. Yeah, don't do it. Don't start a podcast just to have a podcast. Because yep. you'll get tired after like three episodes of how much work it is. And <laughs> yeah. you got to love what you do and you got to love this content. So I think I had a podcast years ago and it was kind of just, I wanted a podcast. Okay. And then I realized, okay, this is, I was, we did a couple cryptid interviews in that during that podcast. And I was like, Ooh, oh, interesting. I'm more interested in this than anything else. We did talk to a pilot who said he time traveled and then, Ooh. We had, you know, the, the weird stuff was the stuff that got me on the edge of my seat. And I realized okay. quickly that like, that's, that's the stuff, that's the stuff I'm most passionate about. But I was, yeah, I, my co-host was super, super analytical, super rational. And he mm. just, we couldn't, we couldn't yeah. explore any of the ideas and it didn't bode well with my personality in terms okay. of like, I want to explore this stuff. And he's like, nah, I don't want to. And I'm like, well, oh man. So I needed somebody like Luke who who loved the blurry stuff and was just like, let's go, let's go for a ride. You know, Luke's a good dude from what I mean. I, okay. I don't know Luke, but I can, you can tell, but I don't know. I, I feel like Luke's a good dude. Yeah. He you is. Know, hats yeah. Up, like give him a, a thank you as well for doing yeah. some amazing work. So. Yeah. He hopped in full. Like he hopped in 
he didn't know what he was getting himself into. I kind of had an idea what it could become, but I didn't. Yeah. But he was just like, let's do it. You know, I don't care. Let's let's talk about Dude. Bigfoot. I'm from Northern California. I love Bigfoot. Let's go. Oh, my goodness. And then it just sort of. So, yeah, talk about start up. Don't start a podcast about something that en- envision a episode 130. What are you mm-hmm. what are you going to be talking about? And are you going to oh. be like banging your head against a wall? Like. If I have to talk about this one more time. Because people will hear it in your voice and it just, I don't know. Yeah. I have to tell. Yeah. You have yeah. to be your biggest fan. And if, and if you don't love the subject matter more than anyone, good luck. Mm. So that's good it, advice. It could be about anything. Go, go, go watch some Gary Vanderchuk videos and, uh, yeah. <laughs> Vayner, Vaynerchuk, I think. Get Vayner. inspired. Yeah. He'll make you, oh my goodness. You'll make you want to, and it's just whatever you're nerd, you're really nerd about. If you're the biggest nerd, you'll have the biggest podcast. That's that's it. So the culture right now loves to nerd out about stuff. Embrace what you nerd out about and become yeah. become become the spokesperson for that culture. I love it. Yeah. And don't that, be too niche yeah. and don't be too big. You know what I mean? Like have oh, yeah. a have a niche, but don't be so don't be a variety show that's so broad and so okay. weird. Unless you're already a famous person doing something like politics or whatever yep, and you can start yep. a podcast but even all the celebrity podcasts from the lockdowns are all dying out that's a good point because yeah. they're all bored yeah, yeah, they're yeah. all bored of themselves at this point like ah, yeah. everyone had a, every celebrity had a podcast because they didn't have anything else to do so oh my goodness oh, but even them even yeah. them with all their platform with all their social media they're still bored of their own podcast why because you, it's got to be bigger than my show <laughs> um Let's get yeah. back. Let's get back to Sorry. Bigfoot for you're good to, to Bigfoot for a bit. Yeah. I've picked up from certain episodes. So you got really deep into reading about Bigfoot and the, over the years, like you're, yeah. you're totally into it. What's the coolest thing. If you don't mind sharing, what's the coolest thing that you own? I'm, I'm assuming you have a pretty sweet Bigfoot collection. Oh, I mean, what's I've the got, coolest thing you have? I mean, I've got, I've got a lot of cool stuff. People have given us from this show. So I've got this oh, Bigfoot really? This Bigfoot pipe right here. Oh, yeah. Can you put that closer to the... It's so cool. You were showing me earlier. Oh, that's legit, dude. It's peeking around the tree. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Someone gave us a pipe. Uh, I got a Bigfoot skateboard here that someone gave me. It's on my wall. Oh, my god. Uh, on my office. Uh, someone, like, made us a big... A Bigfoot... Um, I have a cement one that someone gave us. Uh for, at the conference someone brought in this big giant cement bigfoot it's, it's almost too heavy I can barely move the thing i got to put it in my backyard oh, somewhere wow. um yeah i mean we haven't gotten a ton of bigfoot stuff um but we've gotten a lot of like random stuff from fans and uh, okay i love that That's but so i cool. i mean just the, the pipe was cool enough as it is i think this took him like who knows how many hours he oh my goodness so awesome but we have I love the big guy. And I think that's the cool thing. Every time I get bored, we just do another episode about Bigfoot and and then and then we can get a little bit bored of that and we move on to something else and then we come back. So dude, it's so it's so good because it always like there's definitely certain you'll if you listen long enough, you'll you'll find there's certain threads that go through the show. And uh, mm-hmm. it's it's very cool how you do it. Let's uh I got some some random we got about five minutes left. But I got a few random things to, to throw out. Um Let's do it. What do you what are your thoughts on Skinwalker Ranch? I always think this is a fun one. What do you think? If anything, maybe you don't. Have uh, I think it's probably on some sort of. Um, there's definitely either some sort of underground military base there. Okay. Or there's some okay. sort of like like America specifically. There's a lot of places that are protected and they're not protected because there's some animal there they're protected because there's things they don't want the the society knowing about certain parts of the grand canyon are protected yes certain parts of uh like certain uh reservations are protected in certain areas like we just had a guy email us he wants to come on the show and said there's these two green berets that stand in front of a cave on the navajo res what and and he's seen some blurry creatures coming in out of there he's seen the the insectolin cryptids that they talk about when i don't even know what that is when people have ufo abductions they talk about um seeing these gray aliens but also seeing these like an insect looking cryptids i know they call wow. them they call them insectolins but he said he's seen that and and giants and all kinds of weird stuff going in and out of there it makes oh bigfoot like 
Bigfoot's the gateway, man. It's not even, it's not even close to, to the weirdest. Everyone watching this right now is going to have MIB come to their house later tonight. Basically, like, it knock, sounds very knock, like, time to look so at this. I think there could be some sort of <laughs> ancient burial mound. Okay. Um, there could be some sort of portal there where the stuff comes in and out. I mean, some guys wow. have gone as far as to say is every there's these there's we interviewed this one guy and I take this to the grain of salt because I don't know. But okay. there's supposedly there's two different types of portals in, in, in the world. All right. All right. One of them is from one place on earth to another place on earth. Okay. And the other one is one place on earth to a place in heaven, the heavenly realm. Heavenly realm. It was so, not expecting that, but so you can go sense. from earth to another dimension. Basically. Okay. Okay. So those are two different types of portals. So if there is some sort of portal on Skinwalker Ranch, something where things are coming out of, which is why you uh -huh. get all these stories of this crazy stuff. I mean, um, that skin famous skinwalker book where they talk about the Bigfoot crawling out of like a hole. Yep, 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 the, yep. What's that one called again? Uh just talked about it on our podcast. Uh you're talking about the George Knapp book? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's terrible. I'm losing so much cred because I, I can't remember the name, but I, I can either. see it. I yeah. can see it. I can see it too. <laughs> George Knapp, Cone Kelleher. Yeah, it's yeah, classic. Yeah. Dire so it, it it's yeah, you have this these creatures coming out of it, but I don't think they I think there's certain parts of the of the you know the world where these things are located, and mm. they, I mean, you, you know, you look into the missing four hundred one stuff, and he said this, yeah. it, it's clusters of this stuff, and I don't think that's random. I think that they know it's specifically p places where it's more active, and they have more ability to kind of move to and fro from wow. dimensions or places or. That's wild, dude. Yeah, dude. So our show yeah, gets into all the all the weird stuff. I know, dude. I got like so that. many episodes to get into. I haven't even like <laughs> hit any of the CERN ones, and I know they're coming. Yeah, we did do one on Ooh. CERN, and uh, we're gonna do another one with Gary Wayne on CERN coming up wow. here too. And uh, I know he's kind of Gary Wayne's been on more podcasts than I think anybody else in this whole. He's been on a million podcasts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Every time I turn around, that guy's on another one. I'm like, dang, oh, there's so goodness. many podcasts, dude. So yeah. Uh, Skinwalker Ranch, some kind of portal there, some kind of, and I think it could be linked to some sort of government base underground or something even more sinister, something more, something bigger than any of us even. Wow. But who well, knows? I, we'll end with one last question. And then, yeah. and then we're, so it, let's say, imagine if a Tom Slick or Bob Bigelow was giving out a few billion dollars for cryptid research today yeah what expedition would need to be started immediately oh man i would i would love to do i would love to do a show on like you know someone was getting mad at us today about the mounds in america i would okay. love to do something like megaliths in america mm -hmm. um like weird stuff in america basically the history we've been taught of america is just not it's mm. not accurate. It's Air America is was there was stuff being built here long, long yeah. before the natives got here. And there's this whole history, you know. We even posted a TikTok video about Abe Lincoln giving this quote yeah, about that was bones. fascinating. And I found the actual speech in the Library of Congress, and people are like, No, he's talking about dinosaurs. I'm like, No, wow. he mentions those later. He's talking about these mounds that people were excavating. So they were oh, digging into these mounds, they labeled them Native American a hundred years later. And so you couldn't dig into them. But before okay. when there was America was sort of just people were doing whatever they wanted. If I had a mound on my yard, I'm going to dig into it. I don't like care. Whatevs. Yeah. You, right. can't, you can't tell me I can't do this. It's not politically correct <laughs> yet. So they were finding all this weird stuff. And so I think there would be like, if you could do a show and Tim Alvarino kind of does it, he has a show like okay. this. It's, it's coming out on epoch times, but um, oh nice about this kind of stuff. But I think there's just a lot of stuff in America that there was an alternate history here in America. And sometimes history channel will do stuff like that, but right, there was like right. a, there was a giant show for a while with Hugh Newman. No, no, no. With Jim Vieira. Yes. Yes. Him and right. his yep. brother, they had a, they had yep. a show about giants and, and he came on our show and we talked about that a little bit. Oh, so, wow. um, but I think there's a, there's an alternate history in America and I think it goes hand in hand with cryptids and I think it could be okay. fascinating, but wow. Awesome. I don't That's have, cool. I don't know if I have that kind of time, but yeah, I know. Right. It's, it's I like, the time. I'm so wow. busy doing this. So that's what I would do. Nate, this has been an amazing hour. 
Yeah. Um, I'm so glad we, we finally got to chat. I know you're a yeah, busy dude. guy uh, and I just uh, appreciate you making the time to come on tonight. No uh, do you mind uh, reminding our audience on how they can uh, best uh, keep up to date with uh, with Blurry Creatures and anything else that you want to uh, plug? Yeah. Yeah. No, I appreciate it, man. You've been so kind to, to uh, you know, continue to talk about our, our podcast on this episode. Yeah. BlurryCreatures.com. Uh, somehow we got the dot com and uh, <laughs> at, at, at Blurry Creatures on all your social media, favorite social media. We we somehow got lucky and got all those things. So yeah, wow. you can. It's very simple at blurry creatures or blurrycreatures.com. Come hang out with us. Subscribe podcasts. Uh, we're we're through Spotify, so we're on most of the platforms, but not okay. all of them. But definitely Spotify, Apple, and all that stuff. So yeah, come hang out with us. Send us a message, and uh, we're pretty active on Instagram. That's probably our biggest channel. So mm-hmm. hit us up. Awesome. Say hi. Dude, good stuff. Oh, man. Get blurry. Get blurry. Nate, thank you so uh, much for thanks, coming on. Thanks, Jeremiah. And uh, have a great night, dude. Thanks for listening to the Bigfoot Society podcast. Please take a few minutes to review the show on iTunes. Five stars as it does help us get into the eyes and ears of more listeners on iTunes. Uh, that will help us just get bigger and bigger and get even better quality guests for future shows. Uh, Also, if you have any Bigfoot encounters or cryptid encounters, please send your stories and uh, audio and photos, whatever you've got, over to BigfootSociety at gmail.com. If you'd like to become more involved with Bigfoot Society and get some extra content, we do have a Patreon uh, where you can get all sorts of cool things. For example, for $7 a month, you get extra Bigfoot Society content, uh, usually interviews, but other things as well. You get a sweet membership card and a vinyl sticker that I sent to you in the mail. You get access to the Bigfoot Society After Show, which is an extra interview after the main interview with the weekly guest. And usually they are up for uh, Patreon members to be in that extra show segment with them and me. And you get to ask your uh, question live to them and get an answer from the guest, which as you've seen what guests we've had in the past, this could be a really big deal. There's also a private Discord where you can get involved with uh, talking to me one-on-one and the community there, and that's always a great time. You can find the Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society. Uh, we're very thankful for all our supporters that we have in so many different ways and appreciate uh, all our listeners coming back week after week to listen to more cryptozoology-based interviews. Uh, Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. The views and opinions expressed are those of the guest and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Bigfoot Society. Any content provided by our guests are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone. Thank you. A uh, really quick last minute announcement. Uh, you have a month, about a month, to get to Van Meter, Iowa to listen to me speak live at the festival. 924, $2 to get in. I'll be talking about the Iowa Bigfoot Information Center and some other cool stuff as well. Wink, wink. Um, <clears throat> kind of sharing my research from around the state. Also, uh, big thank you to Paranormality Magazine. Uh, and to all the listeners who nominated me for two categories uh, for the Paranormality Magazine Podcast Awards. So uh, voting is now open for that. If you could go over to paranormalitymag.com and vote for Bigfoot Society in the Best Cryptozoology Podcast category and the Best Interview Podcast category. Uh, now's your time to get over to paranormalitymag.com going to have in the show notes as well and vote for bigfoot society because a vote for bigfoot society is a vote for bigfoot himself or you know this podcast that you listen to uh again thank you so much for listening i appreciate each and every one of you and have a fantastic day or night or however you are 
listening to this. Whatever time. Okay, I'm out.